Welcome back to Ascode. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jedi, and today we are going to be going over how to deploy EKS with Terraform. As a DevOps engineer, deploying EKS with Terraform is something that I do pretty much all the time. And if you haven't done it before, it can be a little bit daunting. Now, quick caveat, there are a ton of different ways of deploying EKS. You can use EKS Cuddle, which is essentially CloudFormation, or you can do it manually. And even within Terraform, there are multiple ways of doing it. So today I'm just going to be showing you the quickest and simplest way that I know how to do it. We'll go over all the popular options within the EKS module for Terraform. And at the end of it, although our cluster will be pretty bare bones, you'll still have a pretty good grasp on how to change the cluster and edit, modify it to your particular use case. So the first place you want to go to is the Terraform registry to find the AWS EKS module. Now this guy is great. There's a lot of great docs on the front page. Let me just zoom in for you a little bit there. Uh, and there's a really good example in the usage section down here. Um, you can use this as a starter template, but I'm assuming that everyone's case here is different and some will be more complex than others. So I want you to go ahead and click the source code link in the description here. Just open that in a new tab. And that'll take us to the GitHub source code for the actual Terraform EKS module. So real quick, I think this is good practice when you're working with any large complex module and you need examples to get you started. A lot of the well-maintained ones will have an examples directory uh, in their source code, which you can use as a starting point. So go ahead and open up the examples section. And here you'll find a ton of examples. There's a complete example, which has pretty much every single option. The EKS manage node group, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Same thing with the self manage node group and a bunch of other special use cases. I recommend going with the self-managed node group example, managed node group example, or the complete, depending on what your use case is. But I will note really quickly, the EKS managed node group example, uh, it configures a dual stack cluster for you that uses both IPv4 and v6. So if that's not what you want, uh, I would just go with the complete example and work from here. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use the complete example as our starting point. And you just wanna open this main.tf file right here. So the only part we're really concerned about today is everything underneath the EKS module header, uh, just specifically this one module block. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy paste everything from this section here up until the next big header. And over in our code, let's take a look at what we already got. I'm gonna use VS code today just for uh, visual clarity on video. I have some configuration here at the top and I have a VPC module. Chances are that if you're doing this in production or a live environment, you might already have a VPC. So feel free to use this code as a starting point. If you don't have an existing VPC, the GitHub and all the example code will be in the description. But back to the EKS part, we're just gonna go ahead and take what we copied and paste it below everything else. Now it's still a lot of code, but we will go through it pretty much line by line and uh, just go over the configuration options. So when it comes to actually doing this on your end, you know which options you might need. And quick note here before I get flamed in the comments, I know this isn't proper Terraform structure, but we're keeping everything in a single main.tf file. Don't do this in real life. This is for illustration purposes only. Please separate your blocks into different files. With that said, let's get editing our EKS configuration. First thing that you'll notice is that the source is a local path. We don't want to do that because we aren't in the actual source code for the EKS module. Instead, the Terraform registry has a really helpful section that we can essentially just copy paste. So we'll just go ahead and paste that in, delete the parts that we don't need. And once we got that in there, we'll move down to the cluster name. Uh, I kind of cheated, but the local.name is already set in the configuration above here. You can use a variable or you can copy the configuration that I have here. It's really up to you. Cluster endpoint public access. We do want public access to our specific cluster, so we will leave that as true. For the add-on section, we got core DNS, coup proxy, and VPC CNI, all very important. In our case, let's just remove some of this extra configuration around core DNS, and that'll do it for that section. Next up, the complete example has the KMS key being managed externally. In our case, let's just let EKS uh, do that for us. We'll get rid of that. If you need to attach any additional policies to the IAM role, go ahead and do that here. In our case, we will not do that. Next up, we got the network configuration. You'll see that we pull our information from the VPC module, oops, which is just right up here. Makes it super easy, but again, you might need to edit this if you have an existing VPC. Next up, we have the option to extend cluster security group rules. So if you need to open any ports for your cluster to communicate, go ahead and do that here. In our case, we do not. Uh, they also have SSH configuration here, which is useful and you might want that. 
but again, we're going with uh, simple here. So we're gonna delete that as well. Next up, if you wanna extend the security group for node to node communication, do that in this section. Again, we will delete this as well. Now we get to the actual node configuration. So this is where you define your node groups, what type of instances that you're gonna be using, how many of them, et cetera, et cetera. You'll see that we have example code for a self-managed node group. But today we'll just use a managed node group for simplicity. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this section. All right, we got rid of the self-managed node group. Let's go ahead and use the managed node group. So this first section here, the managed node group defaults, this is the default configuration for your nodes if you don't specify this later down in the EKS managed node groups section. It's a very similar pattern for the self-managed node groups. So a lot of the concepts will transfer over from here to there. For our case, let's go ahead and get rid of some of these instance types uh, and just leave M5 large as our one node instance type. We want to attach our cluster primary security group. Yep. And here's another extra option where you can add additional VPC security groups. Get rid of that. Similarly, you can also attach additional policies and we don't need that either today. All right, so our node group defaults are looking good. Let's get down to the actual node groups. So you'll see that in the example, they got a blue green deployment type thing going on. We're just gonna delete blue and we'll just turn green into our worker group. So I'll call it as code cluster WG for worker group. Min size one, good. Max size two, because we were doing an example. Desired size one is good as well. Oh, and this is good. So it's defining instance types as t3.large here. Remember up here, we left it as m5 large, but if we override the configuration in the actual node group, uh, it'll use the t3.large. Spot capacity type is great for what we're doing and we'll just get rid of these labels. We don't need any taints either. We'll get rid of the update config and um, we'll leave like a nice hello world tag right here. Now we got the option to configure Fargate profiles. If you wanna use Fargate with EKS, this is a section to do it in. Just be careful because a lot of things are not completely supported when you use that combination. But again, we're not doing that today, so I'll just get rid of this. And finally, we arrive at the AWS auth config map. Like most of the code that you just saw get obliterated from this example, we're gonna delete this section as well. But I wanna stress that if you need to configure auth of any kind on your cluster, if you need to give access to certain users or roles or groups, this is the section to do it. But like I said, for today, we don't need to do that. We'll just go ahead and delete uh, this entire section related to auth. And that should be it for our basic EKS cluster configuration. So from the giant example file, we've arrived at a configuration that is good for our example case. And uh, all that's left to do is deploy and see that it works. All right, now I'm just gonna hop on over to my terminal and hopefully everything works. So again, we got our newly updated main.tf file with everything in it. Again, if you're doing this for real, please split out the code into multiple files, use variables, do all the good stuff. That is my disclaimer. But today is not a Terraform tutorial, so we will go ahead with what we got. If you would like to see a Terraform tutorial with all of the best practices and aliases and workflows that I typically use, uh, drop a comment and I will consider doing that one. So the first thing we do is Terraform init. Let me just make this a bit bigger. And it looks like our init was good, so we'll go ahead and do a validate to make sure we didn't do anything colossally bad. We got one warning for an argument that is deprecated. It seems to be coming from the upstream VPC module, so we're just gonna move along. Otherwise, it looks like our configuration is good to go. So let's do a Terraform plan. I like to save an out file because I think that's good practice. Looks like we have another deprecated argument warning, but otherwise, everything else looks good. So let's go ahead with the apply. Just a quick note while the Terraform runs, if this is your first time creating an EKS cluster and it's taking a long time, don't panic. The control plane itself takes about 10 minutes to deploy and that doesn't even include any additional resources. So if you're deploying a VPC, extra nodes, it's gonna take a little bit of extra time. So it's a great time to just take a walk, grab a drink, play with puppies and uh, just pray everything works. All right, we are back and it looks like our apply was complete without any errors, which is a great sign. Just to verify that everything went through, We'll go to the AWS console, refresh this page, and we should see, there we go. Our ASCO cluster is up and running, and it looks like we have a worker group attached. Just to double check, let's go to EC2. And there you go, ASCO cluster dash WG T3.large, just like I said. So it looks like our node is running, but just to be sure that our cluster is indeed working and I'm not a liar, let's go ahead and interact with our cluster with kubectl. So we'll just run AWS update kubeconfig region us east one name of the cluster as code cluster 
this will update our coop config to ooh. And I messed up. The command is AWS EKS update coop config. Specify the region if it's not in your config and then the name of the cluster. Cool, and it looks like we are now connected to our cluster. Let's do a kubectl get nodes. And there's our EC2, 10.123.3.108. Uh, indeed, that is the correct host name. And as a final test, let's just run a test pod using the engine X image. Give that a second and watch that as well as it starts. And there we go. We have a running container in our EKS cluster that we just provisioned with Terraform. And that is it for today's video. We got a working EKS cluster that we deployed with Terraform. Uh, all the example code, again, will be in GitHub. Check the description for a link to that below. If you're working in a temporary environment, please be sure to destroy. If you have any questions, you run into any issues, feel free to drop a comment. Or if you have any content suggestions for things that you'd like to see in the future, again, please leave it in the comments. My channel is still small enough to the point where I am able to read all of them and respond to most of them. So take advantage of that. And if you liked the video, please consider subscribing. I also have a website and a Discord, so check those out. Otherwise, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you in the next one.